Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. The electronics part of building your own CNC machine can be quite intimidating and really complicated, especially to beginners. So in this video, I'm going to try to explain to you all the different parts that are involved in the electronics of making your own CNC machine. Before we get started with this video, I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring it. They make really high quality professional PCBs at a nice low price. So all you hobbyists out there can get your own PCBs made that are really professional, etched on both sides with VSS, colored silk screen, labeling and all that good stuff for a very very good price. Offers start at just $5 for 10 fully made PCBs and you can also get them assembled at starting at just $88 for 10 pieces. That's a very, very good price. So head over to PCBWays.com to check it out. So let's start at the beginning. Why do we even need electronics in a CNC build? Now, it's probably pretty obvious to you that you're gonna need motors to control your axis. Otherwise, if you're cranking by hand, it's not a CNC machine, it's just a milling machine. And the other thing that's pretty obvious is that you need some control software on your computer that's going to take all the different uh, signals and cutting paths and send it to your machine. But what's in between, that's kind of fishy. Now, I hope it's obvious that you can't just plug in your stepper motors to your USB port on a computer. For one, the, your computer can't supply anywhere near enough power. And secondly, the signals coming out of your USB port don't really work with stepper modes that well. So the first thing you're gonna need is a control board. What I'm using here is an Ethernet smooth stepper. And I already mentioned USB ports, but that's not the only way you can connect your controller board to your computer. Now the way that it used to be is that you connected up your CNC machine to the parallel port of your computer, just like you would connect the printer. And then your computer would actually be the control board itself. It sends directly the signals to the motor drivers. And that means that it is very cheap and easy to build the electronics. But it also means that your computer has to be focused on the task all the time. Because if it just for half a second is doing something else like updating Windows, then your CNC machine is going to run out of commands to do. So that doesn't work that well. Not to mention that nowadays most computers don't have a parallel port anymore. So that option is kind of out of the picture now. So that leaves us with two main options. Either you can connect your board up to a USB port from your computer or to an Ethernet port. The advantage of an USB port is that it is very easy and straightforward, but USB is quite a bit more susceptible to noise and interference. I had that issue with my old CNC router where if I used just a regular USB cable it would create all kinds of issues. So what I had to use was a shielded cable with ferret cores on either side to mitigate that problem. Another way and arguably the best option to connect a controller board to your computer is through Ethernet. That is the way that this board is connected up to my computer and it basically works just like through your internet port. Now you don't want to mix internet traffic and CNC traffic, but you can still use your Wi-Fi or a separate ethernet card on your computer. So now we have sorted out how the computer communicates with the controller board. So this green PCB that you can see here is the smooth stepper ethernet version and it is the controller board. And the board that you can see underneath the blackboard is a breakout board. This basically takes all the different signals that you can control here and breaks them out and makes them available for me to use for all the different functions on my CNC machine. I could just only use the controller board itself and use the different tiny pins on there and connect my stuff up to that, but then I would have to add my own electronics uh, in between to make everything work nicely. So using a breakout board makes this a whole lot easier. Now, depending on what kind of controller board you use, it might already include a breakout board. 
so you don't have to use that anymore at all. Or if you're using the Ethernet smooth stepper, then you can either get a breaker board that just connects to everything like that, or you can actually use a parallel port cable and connect it up to one of these ports. This basically means that you can use any old parallel port breakout board which you would have used back in the day when you connected it up to your computer directly but instead of connecting it up to the parallel port on your computer you connect it to the ethernet smooth stepper which is going to handle the communication with your computer. Any cheaper ch Chinese uh, controller boards that connect to your computer via USB already have a breakout board and controller board kind of in one board. And these boards can be had for quite cheap as well. Another very cheap way to get into CNC control is by using an Arduino. And this little just standard Arduino Uno can be used, connected up to a computer through the USB port and you can put Gerbil on there. That's some software that runs on there that basically makes this into a CNC controller. And then you can either use a shield like this one directly on top that has some low current motor drivers on them or you can just connect up the different pins from the Arduino to your stepper motor drivers. So let's have a quick look at what you can control with this controller board. I marked it out a little bit here. It's very nice on this breakout board as it is very separated. Up here, this row, these are inputs. I can have different limit switches and other end stops connected up here or I could have temperature sensors or basically whatever I want all connected up here. Then here on the side is where I connect all the motors. This board supports up to six different stepper motors which is for most cases overkill but it's nice to just have options for expandability in the future. You have your standard X, Y and Z axis and then you have also have A, B and C. These pins here don't connect directly to your uh, motors though. They still need a motor driver in between, but we're gonna cover that later. And here on the bottom row, we have different outputs. For one, we have the power input here, but all the other ones are outputs. Now, some of these are just directly hooked up to the logic of the board, and you can just set them high or low, just like any other output. But also, two of them are connected to a relay. And that means that you can use them to turn on and off things like coolant pumps and all that good stuff very easily without having to use any other separate electronics. You just have to pay attention that these relays are rather small so you can't just for example hook up your spindle to them directly. But you can use those relays to hook into whatever other spindle controller you are using. So before we get into even more detail how to connect the different things to the control board, let's quickly cover the motor drivers and the motor itself. Now, unless you are using a stepper motor, which is very, very small, like for a 3D printer, for example, you're gonna need a different stepper driver. That's because these motors require a lot of current, which can not be pushed through the tiny traces on a breakup board like this. So what you do is you have signals that come from the breakout board here, which is the yellow cable in this case, that go up to your controller. But then you also have a separate power supply, which is connected up to your stepper driver that provides it with power. In my case, the controller board runs on 24 volts, but the motors themselves, they run on 60 volts. Now a general rule of thumb is the bigger the motors, the higher the voltage you want, since you can't just increase the current uh, limitless because otherwise you're gonna need really, really thick cables. Nonetheless, with a motor this big, I will need quite a beefy power supply as it is gonna draw quite a lot of power. Then the connection between the motor and the motor driver is just the four cables for the stepper motor. These four cables allow the motor to do all the different steps it has to do. And I'm not going to go into the details how the stepper motors themselves work, as that will be a whole another video in itself. But if you Google for it, you're going to find some good explanations. And some motors also have a bit of extra electronics in the, in the back that allow it to send some signals back to the driver. 
These are referred to either as closed loop stepper motors and drivers or just as servo motors. This data basically allows the motor to check if the commands it sent actually moved the motor in a way that it was meant to. So for example, if you were to send not enough power to the motor and the motor wouldn't turn, then it would sense that and send a signal back, hey, I need more power. And then the driver could send more power. That isn't strictly necessary. You can set those settings manually and it is fine in most cases. But if you have a motor that does give the feedback, they can usually go a little bit faster and they also allow a bit more power for the same amount of current. So that was quite a lot of information, very fast. So maybe you want to take a break or rewatch the beginning of the video if you didn't quite understand it yet. But let's move on to some more details about the controller board, as that really is the heart of your electronics on your CNC machine. So the way that the stepper driver is connected with the con controller board is through mainly three different connections. For one, you have the steps, then you have the direction, and in some cases you have enable. What the steps does is for every signal that comes out there, so every time it goes high and then goes high again, the stepper motor moves by one step. Depending on the settings you have on your stepper motor driver, that might be a different amount, but basically that is very simple. And the direction is even simpler. Depending if it is high or low, the stepper motor goes into positive direction or into the negative direction. And depending on what kind of stepper driver you are using, you might also have to connect the enable pin. Now what enable does is it just enables power to the motor. In some cases you can just leave it not connected at all and then it's just going to be always enabled when it has power to the driver. Or in other cases you will have to connect it up to positive uh, currents, for example 5 volts, but that depends on your driver and you're going to have to check the manual for that. Now one other thing to note is that on most stepper drivers the positive pole for all the for the step and the direction is actually common pole, so you, you can just connect it to each other directly and you only have to connect the negative pole independently. And the positive then also just goes to VCC which is 24 volts or 5 volts or whatever it is on your controller board. And with the motors out of the way, let's talk about connecting your limit switches. There are two main different kinds of limit switches. For one, they're just standard mechanical switches. When you press them, the two contacts, they connect or disconnect. Very simple, they're quite easy to understand. I have an example of it here. And the other kind are inductive sensors like these two here. They don't react to anything just pushing on them, but instead they react to metal. So if this metal part comes near it, they're gonna sense that. You can see this tiny little lamp down here, that when I come here close with this metal spatula, this little LED lights up. And the same thing on this one here. So how do we connect these different types? For the limit switch, it is very easy. You can just connect one part of it to ground and the other part to your input. And then whenever you press your switch, your input is going to be pulled to ground and then it senses the signal. The inductive sensors are a little bit more complicated than that. Instead of just having two cables coming from them, they have three. They have one plus pole and then they have a minus pole. These are just connected to ground and to VCC. Now you have to pay attention that your sensors are the same voltage as your controller board. My board here is 24 volts, so I should have 24 volts inductive sensors. Then the third pin is your signal wire. And depending on what kind of sensor you have, once the metal object comes close, this wire will either become high or low. With NPN sensors, the wire will become negative, like the start. NPN for negative. 
or if you have a PNP sensor, then it will become positive. That's just something that you have to keep in mind which kind of sensor you have, because the connection to your board is slightly different. This breakout board has both connection points for NPN and for PNP. So since these are NPN sensors, I just have to connect them to ground, I have to connect them to positive and the signal wire I can just connect to the NPN input. If I wanted to connect an NPN sensor to a PNP input or vice versa, I need some different electronics in between. So I hope this kind of made more sense to you how all these different electronics work together. Now of course in every case it's gonna be slightly different but this is more or less a general generalization of how it works. The only thing that we haven't talked about yet is the computer control software. There again there are quite a few different options. The most popular option is Mach 3 which is kind of outdated though nowadays so I wouldn't really recommend it anymore since it was mainly designed to be used with a parallel port. Then the newer version of it is Mach 4 which is the one that I am using. It has very similar features to Mach 3 but has a lot more functionality, it's very very customizable but it also is kind of overwhelming and it does cost some money. Some other options would be Linux CNC but for that one you have to be careful since the controller board itself has to be inside of the computer so everything is slightly different but I'm gonna have some links below for that as well. Or if you're using an Arduino the most simple one is just Universal Cheat Code Center which connects directly to it is very very easy to use and will get you started but of course doesn't ha quite have all the features that Mach 4 for example has. There are also some smaller different uh, control software that you can use so you really have to do some research there before you decide. Now since I'm not a pro yet in using Mach 4 I'm not gonna show you every little detail but basically what you have to do is in there is configure your different input and outputs. Basically you have to tell the computer at which connection point is con what connected. So I would tell it that on these points are is my X motor connected, here are my limit switches and here are whatever else I have. And then I can start sending commands to the controller board with that. So I hope this video cleared up a lot for you. If it did, please leave a like down below and also consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos about building my own CNC conversion. I also have affiliate links down below which you can use while shopping online to support me without costing you any other money. And if you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing, you can check out my social media linked down below as well. So thanks for watching and until next time.